My name is Kim Murphy, and I was New Brunswick's first COVID-19 case through community transmission. Right now, I really miss my kids. Typical day, I guess, for me is I get up very early, um, get myself ready. I'm a fortunate uh, driver that in that I get to keep my bus in my yard, so my commute to work is about three seconds. Yeah, it's every grade. I drive uh, little tiny children who can barely climb up the stairs of the bus to, you know, high school kids with full beards who are about to uh, graduate. <laughs> It started with really just a, a headache and um, almost my ears were a little bit plugged. So I really didn't think that it could be could be COVID-19 until I read an article uh, about loss of taste and smell. And that's what prompted me to um, call 811. On the day of the testing, I went to the designated drive through area really sweet people, a little bit surreal because you, you know, you felt like you were in some crazy futuristic movie with hazmatted people and, and then they drove that crazy thing up into my nose and tickled the front of my brain. <laughs> I waited about a day and a half for the results and um, was completely prepared to hear, no, you know, you just have a flu. That's not what they said. <laughs> yeah, they told me at the initial phone call that I appeared to be the first um, case of community transmission in, in this area, in New Brunswick, I guess. It's really kind of a mystery to, to this day. I mean, obviously, I think possibly the school bus could have been one. Because I know it was right after March break, we did go back to school for a full week before they closed the schools down. And some kids had been on March break. Did have an, I had a girlfriend who was sick and had the exact same types of symptoms as I did. Again, looking back, you know, I did, it kind of became this sleuth for a while about it. But then I kind of gave up and thought, you know what, it could have been anywhere. I was completely, could barely, you know, lift my head. And um, the beginning of that was also psychologically really scary. I kept waiting for it to go into my lungs. I kept thinking, is it gonna go into my lungs? Uh, I'd go to sleep and think, oh God, am I gonna wake up feeling worse, you know? And then I'd wake up and feel the same and be so thankful. So for about four or five days, I really, I felt like pure crap. hurt me a little bit. I mean, I got over it pretty quickly. They didn't hurt me too badly, but I thought, you know, it, it's the fear for people and I understand it. They People want to blame somebody. Totally understandable. But I think it's really important that people understand that while there are some people who are careless, it's certainly not the case for everybody who contracts this crazy thing. I don't really know yet how I feel about it. I'm not sure that my newfound freedom uh, can really be celebrated yet because we're all still in this situation. We're all still in this self-isolation. Uh, I certainly don't feel brazen enough to do things that I used to do and I, I, I certainly wouldn't do that. Uh, but again, if I, could, if I could somehow help somebody else out with, if I have superwoman antibodies, I would like to give them away. You know, so I, I don't really feel I'm still I'm optimistically cautious, I guess, um, about the virus being dead and gone in me forever and ever. <laughs>